Gerudo Valley holds many strange occurrences in Ocarina of Time. From an invisible warp to the future, to an extra heart piece, to out-of-bounds mountains we can climb, to a crate that no player has probably ever opened before. This is going to be kind of a really strange retrospective about things most players probably didn't even know existed in the desert, so I hope you enjoy taking this bizarre trip with me. The desert area in Ocarina of Time always felt distant to me. I pretty much spent my least amount of time at this place in this game, and I'm not entirely sure why that was the case. I think I was just attracted to the different areas that had more life to them, even though some of my favorite areas were the deadly places like the Shadow Temple, or the bottom of the well and things like that. But there was something about the desert, almost like it was kind of absent from my memory, that I wanted to come back here, 20 something years later, and really just explore it from top to bottom. Doing the things I could not do as a kid that I can do now, and exploring places that I could not reach. So I'm not even gonna lie, it was like 2 a.m., I booted up the game, and I just wandered to the desert on a broken save file. And I come on to talk about that. Now, you've probably seen online some discoveries that other people have posted. Some of you may know that there is a heart piece here when you're a child Link that is inaccessible. It's located in the prison area up above the training grounds, and it's only here when you're a child. Now the problem with this is you can't normally come back here as a child. So this heart piece container is actually normally not obtainable. It's just locked in this weird state of time where the player cannot actually get it. And this kind of ties into something that I've talked about before, and you may have seen a video on this back in like 2019, but there's also a warp here in the desert that warps you to the future. And this is because the developers left the warp for the carpenter's tent still here on the child map. So every map in Ocarina of Time basically has two variants. You have the objects that load in when you're a child, and you have the different objects that load in when you're an adult. And sometimes they make a mistake and they leave parts of those assets behind. Now, under normal conditions for an average player, the idea is you're not supposed to be able to get past the bridge as Child Link. And so a player would normally not be wandering around here as a kid. But of course, if you touch this loading zone, you will get warped into the Carpenter's Tent, which is an area that is only there during the adult timeline. It's interesting because it's basically a time rift that Link just wandered into. But now these are things that have been covered before, that are documented online, and I kind of want to talk about things that I don't know if I've seen people talk about. And this is actually what excites me the most, because it's just sort of childhood wanderings now revisited many years later, and I'm doing the things that I wanted to do back then. How many of you watching actually explored the haunted wastelands completely? From top to bottom, from edge to edge. Now, you may remember that in this area, you're supposed to basically walk from post to post. There's a specific route you need to take, and if you deviate from that route, you basically get lost, and you get warped back to the start. But there's an entire desert outside this area, and it's kind of weird. As a kid, I wanted to know what was out there. I wanted to know what was at the edge of the desert. And there was even rumors and speculation that there was like a pyramid or some sort of figure that you could see with your camera that was like out of bounds or way far away. You may have seen creators like Zeltic cover this on their channel. And things like this was like the ultimate childhood fuel. So coming back years later and giving myself the ability to just leave this area and wander the desert past all the triggers that warp you back to the start was kind of a liberating experience. You can walk on and on and eventually you reach the edge of the desert and the desert just ends. It's like a sheer drop off and you can actually jump off to the great beyond. And I kind of followed this around for a bit, just exploring the outer edges of the map and looking around, I couldn't see anything. Obviously there's like this wind effect that plays on screen, but this area also has a weird draw distance that prevents you from seeing past a certain point. And that's precisely why that pyramid figure that I mentioned that Zeltic talked about in a video, that was one of the reasons why people saw this, was because the camera was clipping the geometry out of the background. So as I walked around, like the desert is very scattered. It's like the edges don't make sense. Like I would imagine that the developers would have made a giant circle or something, but it's actually very angular. This parts of the desert that go out farther than others, and there's really no rhyme or reason why it's this shape. But of course, my greatest interest lied in visiting places that were out of bounds that we could see. In lots of games, obviously Ocarina of Time included, when you're on a map and you're looking at a different part of the world, they often make a mini diorama or representation of that area, so you can see it and know you're going there. Oftentimes, when you leave those areas, if you look behind you, you will see the place you came from. So when we enter the haunted wastelands and we turn around, we can see the fortress that we just left. And normally you can't walk back to the fortress because you will get warped back to the other map. But what's neat is if we get behind this, if we get behind this warp, we can explore this area. 
And it's very interesting because the design for this miniature background asset is different in many ways than the true model, but not in ways you might expect. So for example, we can only walk so far back before the ground just turns to nothing and we just fall through the floor. But if we look to the walls, they have these two rows of bricked walls that protrude from the fortress out to the desert. And normally, if you are within the fortress map, so the area where the guards are patrolling, this wall doesn't have a top. You can't actually stand on top of it. If you were to try to go on top of it, you would actually see that it's paper thin. It's just literally a wall with no top. So you can't stand on it. You just fall behind it and fall out of bounds. What's interesting is on the miniature version of this map, we can't actually walk in the walls. So even though this area can never be reached and the model does not match the actual model, and then they decide to make them have collision. I'm not entirely sure why they would do this because you can never get over here, yet here I am walking across these walls. It also makes me wonder if this is the case because maybe the original map changed later on and they removed certain aspects of geometry that they thought didn't actually matter. But yeah, we can walk along these walls. We can also jump down to the desert from behind these walls. So there's like a little gap we jump over and now we're off to the right, which is an area that you normally cannot walk in on the actual map. So if I were to jump out of bounds here at the actual fortress, um, I would just fall to my death. But here, they made all this walkable. And we can walk over here and we come across these mountains. These objects in particular are the ones that are normally right beside you when you walk from the front after passing through the bridge in Gerudo Valley to the fortress area. But um, they also have collision. For some reason, even though the player can't get over here at all, and there's no hopes of the player ever seeing this, <laughs> You can walk on them, you can get on top of them, and you can walk all the way up and you can get a really cool view that I don't think many players have ever seen. In the online multiplayer mod of Ocarina of Time, this would be like one of the ultimate hiding spots. Like hiding in the background assets for like a hide and seek game where someone's looking around the desert and you're just in an area that you can't get to normally. That would be awesome. But while we're up here, why don't we take a look over at the jail area? Because again, due to this being a background asset, the jail itself is weird looking. They didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. It's just kind of this messy crater in the wall that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but it doesn't need to because you can't normally see it. And speaking of the jail, some of you may have seen my previous video about taking the Gerudo guards and having them arrest Link during odd moments of the game. I highly recommend watching that video if you haven't checked it out yet, but I'm further exploring this concept and I might make another video on it, but for the time being, I want to show you a pretty funny one. So if we go back and defeat Ganondorf, there's a cutscene where he gets banished and he's basically drifting out in this white void. Now during these cutscenes, the game actually makes Link load in as nothing. So he's basically invisible or he's not present. And for this map, they put him in sort of the center of the map. And what I did not realize is that if we spawn a guard in to arrest Link, well, the guard appears standing on Ganondorf's chest. It looks really, really funny. And uh, Ganondorf's, I guess, into some very interesting things. And what I didn't realize is that the camera in this cutscene is facing downward. I always assumed it was facing forward and Gandorf went off to the distance, but he's actually decreasing in height and falling downwards. So yeah, if you spawn a guard here, they will stand proudly on top of Gandorf's chest and then the game just crashes. But let's head back to the desert now. I want to talk about something that I became oddly fixated on and this is a single wooden crate that I don't think anyone has broken before. And it's very similar to what I just described earlier. It is a background asset that you normally cannot reach. So as you're leaving the training grounds and you're heading to the haunted wasteland, you can see background assets. So they have the posts with the cloth on them that guide you and you can see a single wooden crate out in the distance. Now the problem is, as soon as you touch the sand in any way, shape or form, you get warped to the haunted wasteland map. And of course, this warp takes you farther on the desert. This is a completely different map, but the crate you're looking at is right there in front of you. Alongside other crates, you can see in the distance. But the thing is, these are not the same crates. These are just developers who place the objects in the same spot on separate maps so that it looked like you warped down to the desert and now you're closer to what you're seeing. So these objects are not the same. We head back to the fortress, we look out again, we can see that box and <laughs> it's very difficult to get to. For one, the entire warp that takes you to the haunted wasteland, it extends far above the ground. So even if you were to hop over it and be up in the air, you will still trigger the warp and appear in the desert. So of course you might be thinking like, well, if we can't reach there, maybe we can send something over there. I then took out bomb chews. 
Maybe I could have a bomb chew, ride out to this box, blow it up, and destroy it and see what's inside. And there's a problem with that too. So the bomb chews will explode before getting to the crate. They cannot make the full distance. And the reason for this is actually because the walkable ground that they are riding across actually ends before the crate. So even if you were to make it past the warp, you wouldn't be able to actually walk out to the crate without falling. So just for the heck of it, I enabled the moon jump and went sort of around the warp and to the crate um, from above. And as you can see, slipping off the crate causes Link to grab it, but I'm basically clipping through the ground. If I were to let go at this point, I would just fall to my death. Well, normally, obviously I have a moon jump on so I can prevent that. So while I was out here, I decided to just destroy the crate. So I took out the Megaton hammer and uh, struck the ground. This of course destroys the crate and we fall into the great beyond with all the wooden splinters. Now, nothing spawned when I broke this box, so unfortunately it didn't have anything in it. Well, except for Link's death. Now, the wooden box and the crate can both be grabbed with the hookshot, but both of these lead you to death, or at least normally. Obviously, you can grab onto the box if you were to hookshot over to it, and that is what I'm thinking is the actual way to get this. So the only way I can think of of someone actually getting to this crate legitly without cheating is by using glitches. The thought that comes to mind is someone could initiate a bomb hover and utilize bombs to basically hover up into the air and around the trigger for the warp. They could then, in theory, land on the ground behind the warp and then use the hookshot to grab onto the crate and pull themselves over to it. Now, I'm not a speedrunner and I don't do glitches. I'm a very vanilla Ocarina of Time player, but that's the only way I can theorize that someone could actually get to this crate under normal circumstances without using like a game shark or something like I am. And honestly, I can't think of a reason why someone would focus on this box as a kid. I'm just thinking, if I was playing this on the Nintendo 64, this box probably looked like a blur in the background. I might not have even known it was an actual crate, but obviously on an emulator where things are a bit more clear, uh, this box definitely got my attention. And again, this would be a perfect hiding spot for Ocarina of Time Online if someone were to get over here somehow and just be like taunting people, <laughs> like hiding on the map in a floating box where no one else can get to them unless they knew how to bomb hover and get over here. But yeah, those are the things that I discovered just wandering through the desert again many, many years later on a nostalgia trip at like two in the morning. Obviously, this was a bit of an unscripted video. I kind of just wanted to share it and see if people were interested. But if you did enjoy it, let me know in the comments below. And I'll see all of you really, really soon in my next video. Cheers, everyone.